Hello everyone. Today in the topic of cardiovascular physiology, let's dive into a Frank Starling mechanism, which is a very clear foundational concept in the CVS physiology that clearly explains how changes in the volume of blood filling the heart that is preload influences the strength of the cardiac contraction, ultimately the stroke volume. So now what is the Frank Starling law? So the Frank Starling mechanism states that the stroke volume of the heart increases in response to that of increase in the volume of the blood filling the ventricles which is the end diastolic volume. So what it means is increase in the stroke volume is directly proportional to the increase in the EDV which is the end diastolic volume. In simpler terms when more blood returns to the heart the heart muscle fiber stretch more and this greater stretch leads to greater contraction. This is what is the Frank Sterling's mechanism. So this particular relationship is very crucial for balancing the output of the left and right ventricles and ensuring that the blood flows matches metabolic demands of the body. Now let us discuss guys how this mechanism works. So when the end diastolic volume goes up, the cardiac muscle fibers often referred as sarcomeres are stretched to a more optimal overlap between actin and myosin filaments. So this improved alignment increases the force of contraction thereby boosting the stroke volume. So in essence the heart automatically pumps out whatever the volume of blood it receives within the physiological limits. So this mechanism helps maintain cardiac output preventing fluid congestion and making sure tissues get adequate blood supply and oxygen. So now we have to discuss about two important terms whenever we discuss about the Frank Sterling's mechanism one is the preload and afterload. So let me discuss about what is preload. So preload is essentially a degree of stretch on the ventricles at the end diastole. At the end of the diastole what is the degree of a stretch on the ventricle? is called as preload which is directly proportional to the end diastolic volume right so what is it when you increase preload how can you increase preload by increasing the venous return so when you increase preload you get a corresponding increase in the stroke volume up to the point so think of preload as a filling pressure that sets the starting length of the cardiac muscle fibers before the contract right this is what is called as the preload and what is the afterload here? Afterload is the resistance the ventricle must overcome to eject the blood. Right? So in the hypertension that is higher blood pressure in the iota means the left ventricle has to pump harder to overcome the resistance of higher pressure which is present in the iota. So when afterload is chronically high which means in the setting of chronic hypertension the heart compensates by thickening its walls that is the ventricular hypertrophy which is a compensatory mechanism what we see in the chronic hypertension. A thicker wall helps reduce the wall stress but also changes the heart's geometry can eventually affect the cardiac function if it is excessive we often refer as cardiomyopathy. So acutely if afterload increases the heart stroke volume tend to decrease because it's harder to push the blood out against a higher pressure but over the time the compensatory mechanisms will work the heart may adapt but this comes at a cost of increased muscle mass and potential long-term strain in terms of hypertrophy right so this is what you need to know about the afterload so what is the handy summary here what you want to know from this uh, preload as well as afterload remember guys increase in preload increase in end diastolic volume there will be stronger contraction and increase in the stroke volume so take home point is increase in preload increase in stroke volume in the same manner increase in the afterload so heart must work harder against a higher pressure typically there will be decreased stroke volume initially but through the chronic adaptation compensatory mechanisms it can lead to hypertrophy so this is what you need to know about the preload as well as the afterload. So now I want to give some of the clinical link regarding the topic whatever we have discussed mainly with the chronic hypertension. 
in chronic high blood pressure what happens is the left ventricle faces persistently high afterload so to compensate it develops left ventricular hypertrophy so the muscle gets thicker thereby reducing the wall stress since the wall stress is related to the pressure radius and the wall thickness while this adaptation can help in the short term but excessive hypertrophy can eventually lead to diastolic dysfunction that is the ventricle becomes stiff and other complications such as heart failure may develop so that's the reason managing the hypertension carefully is very very important to prevent this left ventricular hypertrophy thereby managing the afterload so this is what we need to know about one of the very important topic of the cardiovascular physiology which is the frank stalling mechanism preload and afterload